On today's World Insider, incumbent French President Emmanuel Macron in a runoff with close rival Marine Le Pen. What does the election mean for France and Europe? What's next for French leadership? Here's our host. Tianwei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. A toss-up between the incumbent French president Emmanuel Macron and his closest challenger Marine Le Pen. The runoff election is set for April the 24th. A preliminary exit poll, though, shows Mr. Macron leading the first round with 28.2 percent of the vote, ahead of Ms. Le Pen by nearly 5 percent. Things have changed a lot in the past five years, of course, both inside and outside France. The COVID-19 pandemic, the Ukraine conflict, and the rising cost of living are expected to weigh on voters' decisions this time around. Before we get down to a discussion about the French election and French politics, take a look at this first. Mr. Macron said the presidential runoff in the next two weeks will be decisive for France and for Europe. Ms. Le Pen said her ambition is to make France a country that reconnects with greatness. France is a traditional significant member of the European Union. It now holds the six-month rotating presidency of the EU Council. The country's presidential election is being closely watched across Europe. The incumbent French president has been active on the international stage. He has insisted on steering the EU toward independent policy, and he has fashioned himself to be a European statesman attempting to broker peace between Ukraine and Russia, while also being active in NATO and the G7. Meanwhile, the conflict in Ukraine and a lack of energy security have become major concerns for Europeans, including French voters. Inside France, the pandemic and the rising cost of living have become main election issues, and some analysts say French voters could be more swayed by proposals on health care, the environment, and immigration. These domestic challenges and foreign relations are shaping the election, with the final decision to keep or change French leadership to be known in two weeks. Presidential election in France. We are joined by a panel of three. In Paris, Joab Toker, professor at the American Graduate School in Paris. In Brussels, Claude Moni Gay, who is the CEO and co-founder of European Strategic Intelligence and Security Center. And in Beijing, Wang Yiwei, Zhang Monet Chair Professor and Director of the Center for EU Studies with Renmin University of China. I hope you can all hear me right now. Can you, gentlemen? <clears throat> Wonderful. We seem to have one gentleman who cannot hear me very well at this moment. We'll try to connect to him a bit later. But let me ask you, Professor Toker. So, First round, surprising? Mm, not really. Surprising if you take a look, a close look, a tight look at the very last days, at the countdown, uh, let's say the last week or so, in which there had been a particular volatility of the electorate. If you watch very closely what the polls predicted two days ago, and six days ago, and ten days ago, then, so on a very short uh, 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 while basis, yes, things were somehow surprising, but not if you look at the yeah. overall larger picture in which Mr. Macron was expected to mm. come first, and um, the question was how wide will be the gap between him right. and Madame Le Pen. Well, of course, uh, last election was also the two face to face. Uh, now. Uh, Professor Wang, uh, looking from afar, second round, many say uh, some of the uh, left and the center-right and center-left are all going to support Mr. Lecon, Macron and uh, Ms. Le Pen, even though modest it, her stance about Europe, for example, about some of the other policies, still will not be able to get much support. Your take? Well, the longer, the more dangerous for uh, President Macron because uh, the sanctions 
pay the high cost for the uh, citizens. So that we complain about uh, the oil price, food price, inflation, and about of the uh, the social and uh, political, you know, not so much achievements that uh, the president uh, Macron didn't make. But this again is not just about the two people. It's about mm. uh, which France is a more uh, nationalist, uh, uh, anti-migration, or more pro-European integration, the liberal France. Mm. We see uh, Professor Toker, Ms. Le Pen quite swiftly trying to switch her stands a little bit, particularly about, uh, you know, France's relationship with the European continent and so on, uh, and also trying to focus on the daily issues for the French family, for example, about the inflation and about the energy and things like that. So, Professor Toker, do you see that it's likely to change her image in front of the voters? According to the uh, indications and the studies, she had succeeded to some important extent, indeed, to modify her image. And as you rightly uh, pointed at, on one hand, some of her positions, such as getting out of the European Union or out of the Euro, which, uh, which she recommended to do just five years ago, that's over. We don't hear about it. Even if you look nicely and you dig into her detailed written platform, mm. you see clear anti-EU measures and insinuations. And on the other hand, on the more personal, electoral, directly electoral aspect, you have um, a woman, human being, a warmer yeah. woman, friendlier, um, um, who has uh, cats around her, who mm. uh, is kissing um, uh, electors around her, so uh, uh, more human than what was supposed to be the image of this mm. very person and the program she stands for for decades. Well, uh, Professor Toker, you know, one of the things uh, Professor Wang just mentioned is that, that uh, it's very likely this uh, election is going to help us to, to uh, define, at least uh, some of the candidates try to put it that way, what kind of friends uh, the country wants. Is it more going to be more European or is it going to be different? Uh, do you see it is about the bigger issues or do you see this is still mainly about domestic issues? No, I, 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 I absolutely adhere to the larger analysis, which says that, of course, it's a competition between two persons, two political persons, and two uh, ideologies to some extent. But it means this competition and the come out of this, uh, the outcome yeah. of this competition means well a lot. We're speaking about the status of France in Europe. We're speaking about the perception of the EU through its own eyes. Because right now, and over the five years of Macron's uh, presidency, uh, France was perhaps the most assertive, the most ambitious Europe member of the EU, at least mm. amongst the, the, the major, the big European members. And he still, Macron still has large ambitions regarding European security, European common positions on trade, on foreign policy, on uh, uh, climate, um, a, and in a way he's leading, if you wish, the ambitious version of the mm. EU uh, uh, when it comes to relations with the US, right. with Russia, with China, regarding climate issues, etc. And Marine Le Pen, of course, uh, con concentrating on uh, cost of living issues, on down-to-earth purchase issue, is of course has a larger scope which would not necessarily stop her, if elected, okay. from dealing with both down-to-earth issues and others. Mm. Now, of course, uh, Mr. Macron, as one of the candidates, uh, tried to portray the election as about bigger issues. Mm. And uh, it seems that Professor Toker is very much uh, uh, in that boat. But uh, Professor Wang, you know, now what is this bigger issue? Is it bigger issue about the war? What kind of war needs to be fought? Or is it a bigger issue about what kind of leadership France is having in Europe? Or is it about uh, what kind of Europe does, do the Europeans want? What is this bigger issue, you know, as an observer? All of them, they are very big. And uh, that's the reason this time different with uh, five years ago, actually the two same candidates. Uh, political positions are also very similar. But the voters uh, gave up the right because the thing about this is the two evils. They're, they don't like either. Uh, 
the time I think differently is uh, five years ago is U uh, Ukraine. I think mm. people think about uh, if Le Pen be the president of, uh, she visit, she met uh, President Putin. Even Putin found many populist party in not just in France, in uh, many other European uh, countries as well. Recently, uh, you know, Hungary, Serbia, the so-called the uh, populist uh, leaders, and then this make uh, the Europeans think about this is about the future of Europe. It's not about the future of France. You know, the European media say the enemy is not about Putin. The enemy is also uh, Le Pen. <laughs> mm. So it's uh, France. You know, they are the leading role in the <coughs> European integration. Of course, we don't want to stand in any team. They are candidates of their own political elections. But this is a very interesting question, uh, Mr. Moniguet. I want to go to you as well. Welcome, first of all, to our program. I, hope, I know earlier you had some difficulties hearing us, but you know, tell us what okay. do you think is this bigger issue? If there is a bigger issue that the voters have in mind? I think we, we have several issues in, uh, in, this, uh, in this election. Uh, we have, of course, an international issue, two international issues, to say the truth. One, of course, is the, the ongoing war in between uh, Russia and Ukraine, in which France and President Macron try to, to play an important role as a, as a broker, a peace broker between the two, the two parts. And the, and, and the second international issue is the place of France uh, in NATO and in, uh, and in, uh, in the mm -hmm. European Union, of mm -hmm. course. But for the, the, the French voters, the European Union is not really an issue because you have a very mixed feeling about European Union in France. A lot of people like European Union and the advantages that it gave to, to France. But at the same time, you have a lot of people who dislike the European Union and say it costs too much, uh, there is too many rules, uh, we, can't, we can't understand the rules and so on. And you have another issue, which is an important internal issue, which is just the financial issue, the level of life of the people, mm. the fact that the life is difficult for many French, and will be much more difficult in the coming future because the war. Mm. Now, Mr. Monique, if I can, you know, some of the earlier issues, for example, French attitude or the Europeans' attitude toward Russia and toward the Russian-Ukraine conflict, particularly about the sanctions, is very much to have an impact on the latter issue you talk about, which is the daily issue of every household when it comes to energy bills, when it comes to quality of life, uh, because imports are coming, some of them, from Russia. So how, how are the voters articulating you know, these two things? You know, on the one hand, one cannot just think about the bigger things while believing that it is far away and not going to have a huge impact on the daily lives of everyone. So how are voters articulating this? It's difficult, I think, for, uh, for uh, an average voter, because here, w once again, you, you have two levels of, of reflection. The first one is the, 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 the big play, the, the big game. Uh, the fact that you have this war, which is an horrible one, and which uh, moves the French. I mean, you have a, a, a very important emotion in France, as seen anywhere in Europe, because the crimes in the war, mm. because the aggression of Russia against Ukraine, and so on. And most of the French think that uh, Macron and France tried to play a, a positive role in this war. And uh, uh, benefiting of the fact that Macron was, for a, a long time, uh, near uh, uh, President Putin. If you remember in 2017, when he was elected for the first, uh, his first mandate, the first uh, people, the, the first uh, uh, state chief, uh, statesman he, he invited in, in Paris was uh, Vladimir Putin. Mm. So he really tried honestly to, to, to build a new relations with, uh, with Russia, but it didn't work. So you have a, a kind of, uh, of French proudness about what France 
did and what France tried to, to, to do today. Yeah. But in the same time, of course, uh, the people understand uh, that the situation could be extremely difficult in the next future, mm. uh, about the energy issue, about a lot of products which come from, uh, from, uh, from Russia, from Ukraine, or from Russia, of mm. course. Uh, Professor Toker, also the same question. You know, you think about it. It is, of course, France is a very important European country. It has uh, a, a big say in terms of uh, setting the trend of uh, interaction with other countries and other parts of the world, uh, um, with together with the other European countries and capitals. But. Um, there is the issue also about uh, friends talking about independent decisions uh, by uh, the European Union and by the Europeans themselves, their own fate. But obviously, NATO is pretty much a U.S.-led uh, security platform. Meanwhile, with the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict going on, the Europeans are much more than earlier times depending on the security uh, coming from security guarantee coming from uh, Washington. At least that's what many Europeans believe today. So, uh, Professor Toker, you know, to what extent will that cross-Atlantic issue also be at the back of the mind for the average voter? Or is it too much to expect for average voter? No, I agree that uh, on the level of the individual voter who has to make up his or her mind uh, about which um, uh, a vote to put in a small envelope uh, in 10 days, that's too much. Mm. But it's interesting that what, what we saw over the last six weeks since the Ukrainian-Russian conflict started, since hostilities started, is that at the beginning of the first two, three weeks, uh, President Macron electorally, politically, had benefited a lot and the fact that he had the posture of uh, mediating with Putin, trying to uh, uh, yeah. um, be constructive in, in, in advancing uh, some possible solutions, although he was not successful whatsoever in achieving anything. And by the third or fourth week of the conflict, we are right now entering the seventh week of the conflict, that element in the, the way the, the, the pollsters and the institutes had detected mm. it went down. And the moment for, so to speak, down-to-earth um, pocket issues became more dominant. Yeah. And this also explains why Madame Le Pen um, had come out um, finally in a strong that position point. that what would have been expected earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Monique, do you think across Atlantic relationship, you know, Europeans uh, ever troubling relationship with uh, how to keep a balance of his own decision vis-a-vis -vis United States. Is it part of people's thinking about what kind of friends they want or too much? I don't know because uh, the relation between the United States and, uh, and France and the relation between France and NATO is a very old story for, for the French people. Mm. Uh, some of them don't remember, but uh, for instance, uh, at the time of uh, General de Gaulle, 60 years ag ago, uh, France uh, went out of the military command of the NATO and uh, NATO was quite expelled from France and came to, to Brussels. Uh, but w uh, later, much later, uh, with Jacques Chirac, with Sarkozy, and, and uh, with Macron, no, of course, uh, France uh, reintegrated the, 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 the military command, and France wants to play a role in NATO. But it's complicated, of course, because in one hand, you have the big power in NATO, which is clearly the United States, which spent a lot of money on defense. And on the other hand, you have the, the 27 members of the Euro European Union. That makes a lot of countries, 27, but it's n it doesn't make mm. a lot of money. So the, the, the Americans always tell us yeah. you have to spend more on defense, and, uh, and we are reluctant. No, clearly, since the beginning of this war, mm. a lot of countries decided to do more for defense. And there, it could be possible to build a real European pillar to NATO, which clearly doesn't really exist for the moment. Yeah. It's just for the moment a, a kind of blah blah. It's, it's just political discussions. But if we clearly invest in defense, we could try to play a role in NATO, to still a member of NATO, but with a 
possible independence of decisions vis-à-vis -vis the, the United States. You know, there are a lot of e details and a lot of uh, real policies that's actually at stake. Uh, I'm sure when the two candidates, Ms. Le Pen and Mr. Macron, debate with one another uh, for the next 15 days, many of those details might be coming out and it might be a great opportunity for French voters to think also about some of those details. We're going to continue our discussion, gentlemen, about the French election and what does it mean for the European politics after this break. This is World Inside with me, Tian Wei. Our topic today, French election. Of course, it's not just about the presidential election in France, but also its impact on the European politics in the middle of this Russia-Ukraine war. With me, Joe Aptoker, Claude Monique, and Wang Yiwei. Professor Wang, you were patiently listening to your two uh, colleagues talking about what they see in this election. Now, as an observer coming from afar in China, uh, second largest economy in the world, who, which wants to have a good relationship with the European counterparts. Professor Wang, what are some of the messages you are reading out of this uh, first stage of the election? I think these are about uh, the two uh, kind of uh, choices for you. France, back to the history or back to the future? Back to the history, Le Pen, you know, nationalist France, you know, very emotional uh, it's, uh, the, uh, for her political uh, you know, positions. Back to the future is more of the uh, strategic autonomy of the European Union and also uh, Great France. So I think maybe the second round, uh, President Macron will, will win because uh, <laughs> people need certainty. Uh, given so many uncertainties, uh, given Le, Le Pen is very uncertain, you know. Uh, you see our two French uh, panelists, uh, they are smiling on their face. Of course, we are not here to bet one candidate against any other candidate, but just, uh, you know, what does that mean to you, Professor Wang, if you are looking at the debate, if you are looking at the election process, the first round particularly, quite close with one another? If you think about the Chinese position, you said, uh, there's a saying that China is the Eastern France. France is the Western China because of they're very proud of the history, of the culture, and the language, and strategic autonomy. So uh, under the current uh, working relation, President Xi, President Macron, I think uh, quite good to uh, contribute to the bi bilateral relations, not just China-France and China-European Union as well. Mm. Now, the world is at a critical juncture, uh, Mr. Monique. Uh, there are so many changes that we do not know the real nature of it yet. Um, and which, with every election of every country, probably people are already making some of those important choices. French election, of course, is one of those elections. So um, from your reading, what seems to be the sentiment in France about how to choose its future on the European continent? Uh, you used to say elections are mainly about people's daily lives, right? It's about the economy, stupid. Remember that slogan coming out of U.S. politics. But now are we seeing changes in people's perception about what elections are about at a critical juncture? Mr. Monique. Yes, you have a, uh, clearly an important point here. Uh, if you, if we take the result of the first, uh, the first step of the election, the first turn, uh, we had 60 percent, almost 60 percent of the, the people who decided to, do, of the voters who decided to vote for a non-traditional party, for an extremist party from the left, or, or mainly for, from the from the right. That means that 60 percent of the voters which came to the to the to the vote stations yesterday disagreed with the with the way France is uh, is run, of course, mm. but disagreed also with a lot of things, and a lot of those people think that Europe is the responsible 
for this. And you have people in France, probably approximately between 40 and, and 50 percent of people, think that France will be better outside Europe. But of course, clearly, uh, and I think anyone could understand this, it is absolutely impossible for France to retreat from, uh, to, to withdraw mm. from, uh, from Europe. France is one of the founders of Europe, it's one of the main yeah. country. It's also, uh, uh, if we take the, the, the aspect of the European defense, it's also the country, uh, the only yeah. co European country which is a permanent member of the Security Council, and it, it's a nuclear nation. So very clearly, France has a very distinct and a very important role mm. to play uh, in, uh, in the European construction, yeah. and Europe is important for France. But you have clearly those two parts of the population. Approximately an half of the population right. is against Europe, and the other one, the other half is, um, is supporting the European project. Mm. We have seen relatively lower voter turnout for the first round. Of course, the both candidates and others are calling voters to come out and support them. Now, Professor Toker, how do you interpret this, especially when the world is changing so fast? Uh, will this election about the usual topics, mainly about people's welfare, that's true in every election anywhere in the world. However, will, will, will this more about uh, bigger issues as we discussed earlier in the program? The, the participation and the level of um, the, the percentage of people who stay home or who go to the vote and just um, uh, vote with a, with a blank uh, uh, um, ball um, uh, is part of the larger issues because of confusion, because of yeah. desperation at times, because of rough criticism, let it be against the EU, let it be against some policies of President Macron or the personality of um, um, of Mr. Macron, the way he comes across for many of uh, of the French people. So, not voting is, in a way, a yeah. of course, a political act. It has been uh, uh, indeed more significant this time than five and, and ten years ago, but not in dramatic terms. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think that this element per se alone. Uh, may have a lot of influence. What may have a lot of influence in an untraditional way is indeed if something dramatic happens on the Russian-Ukrainian front um, um, during the coming 10 days. Yeah. Well, we know that both sides are trying to escalate uh, their preparations for a bigger fight uh, when it comes to Russia-Ukraine conflict things are getting likely ever more complicated. For now, I want to thank all of you for joining us on this discussion. Joab Toker, Claude de Monigay, Wang Yiwei. Really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Insight or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of my team, thanks for being with us. Bye.